Hey everybody, welcome back here. Here with Nerdbound, and I am Stacy. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through a little bit of how do you troubleshoot LSPDFR. All right, so I have my LSPDFR. Just so you guys know, every time you update, one of your biggest stoppers in updating, so, so what you do is, is I've already made an, a video for this. If you guys want to go check it out, it's uh, my how to install, update, rage plug and hook. And basically you go through, you get your script hook 5, you get your, your rage plug and hook, and you go through and you update all of that. And now once you get done with that, uh, if LSPDFR were to come out with an update, they would also send out something stating an update. And then you have to go in there, you would do your LSPDFR, then you do your Rage Plugin Hook. And the reason you do it that way is because LSPDFR comes with Rage Plugin Hook, but it comes with a very old version, and it would be very outdated, and it won't work, it'll cause your game to crash. If your mods are not up to date, it will cause them to crash. Now, some of the times, like if I click on my mods folder and I'm in the edit menu, it'll come up, would you like to update your mods folder? You'll say yes. Another important feature is this ASI manager. Always double check, even usually it'll pop up in a little box here that says, would you like to update your ASI manager for your OpenIV? You always want everything updated. If you don't, it will not work properly and you will get crashes. Another thing that you guys can watch out for is in not the mods folder. This is the regular GTA 5 directory. If, if you look at this, and then you look at this, you will see there's VS. There's Elba, uh, hmm. apparently this one doesn't show up. Oh, it's down here. Um, but then elbow, and then I have ELS, ELS, execute code, execute code, my mods folder, my mods folder. That's what OpenIV is, is it literally takes all these files and it opens them up for you to be able to manipulate them. Um, and that was one of the reasons why they didn't, take two didn't want them to do it, but then they realized how many people mod and gave us our permissions back. However, so... There's going to be a couple different things that we need to figure out that are very important. Every time you do an update, you might wonder why you only have certain cars. Now, what happens if you go to Update, Update, Common Data in your Mods folder? What will happen is every time you do this, every time you update, it'll change your DLC list because what they're doing if we go in here, we see MP Business, all this. This is all our DLCs, right? This is all the ones that Rockstar make. All the way down to patch day, I think, 17 now. And what will happen is, is I have BX Charger, I have FBI Pack, I have LSP Pack, I have Realism, I have Scene Director, I have uh, Sheriff Pack. And what ends up happening is, through each one of these, you... It, it basically replaces the file, and when it does that, it replaces the file with whatever's in it. So when Rockstar updates the game, it replaces the file, and it'll take out all the ones that I have. All the ones that I've added. So it's always good to keep a copy of something like this for an update or for something like that. And that's just one of the smaller things. Um, game configs. So game configs... This is going to help you with your amount of cards. If I go into any one of these, or if I go to, we'll do it this way. So there's all these different cars in here. Add-on, 
add-on or replace, which by the way, I try to replace my cars, but you are more than welcome to add on. It's not going to be an issue, but what is going to be an issue is if you do not have the right game config file, like right here. Usually the one that works for me is this one right here. And, and what this does is this basically fixes it so that if you add a car on that isn't made by GTA 5 and it's made by somebody else and it's not meant to be in the game, the game code does not like that. It does not like that there's a car that it's not sure what to do with. So it will force crash the game. Or you could be playing the game and then it could try to spawn that car specifically, and then it's going to crash. Um, and so if you do this, and let's say this one doesn't work for you, that's fine. When I typed in game config on this page, there's game config, there's game config for add-on car crash, out, this tells you right here it's outdated, game config 1.0.1103, that's for um, 1103, the, the game that's for the GTA actual game version, I believe. It tells you in Rage Plugin Hook when you do that. So this is kind of some of the important ones. Now, now the next step that I'm going to get into for you guys is the most... I would say this is the most important part about troubleshooting. And I apologize firsthand because troubleshooting sucks. And there's just not much you can do about it. But let's say I have all of these. And let's say I have all of these. Well, let's say one of these is working. I don't know which one. That's where it starts getting funny. I have code 3 callout.dll. Now, I don't know if you guys have your file extensions. But it's kind of important that you at least have the type right here. It tells you DLL. If you don't know that this is a DLL, it's going to be an issue in the future because let's say that this is the one that I think is there, there's an issue with. So I'm going to do DLL.disable. It's going to tell me if you change the file extension name, the file might become unusable. Are you sure? Well, yes, because I'm specifically changing it so it's unusable. What's going to happen is when the game sees this, it will not be able to call this because it, it, look, disable file right here. It's not going to be able to call to it, which means if this is the plugin that's going to be crashing, then it will not be able to call the crashing plugin, therefore it will not crash your game. However, when you get to a certain point, let's say you go in there, and it still crashes, and this is disabled. Well, that means you can come back out here, and you can do change the file name again, and then we can change this one to... I did not want it to open. I wanted... Okay. And then I'll just go in here and I'll do dot disable for this one. And then I kind of have to keep going through until I figure out which plugin's causing it. It might not be a plugin. The most reasonable data that I can give you guys is your biggest, ch your best chance at finding an early state of a crash is when it first crashes. If you've just put a plugin in or a mod, or a script, or whatever it is, it's probably going to be whatever you just put in. I am at the point where I can put in, you know, three, four plugins, and I can tell you which one's going to crash, specifically because I know what the mods are doing, or because I, I understand the system a little better. I can also go back through and see, you know, I mean, obviously if I go in here, say I go in here and I, you know, I took this, it says false, and I, I just kind of did that, and then I saved it. I'm not going to, but I saved it. Um, and then what ends up happening is I go into the game, and it crashes, and I'm like, oh, you know, I was just messing around with this Infini file, or INI, sorry, dot INI file. I don't know why I call it Infini file. It's a configuration setting. Um, but a dot INI file, and... 
uh, I'll know that that was the one that I was just recently messing with. Uh, same with the cars. Sometimes cars do not like, they just don't like to be loaded for whatever reason. Um, it could be it, usually the maker of the mod or there's just something wrong with um, like mapping or there's just little nitpicks that it doesn't like. And so what we do is we'd go back to whatever one that we just replaced and we'll say this one right here. And then you can take this out. Understand what, what's going to end up happening is if you take anything out of your mods folder, it will call back to the original. The only thing is, is like with this one, um, the one that I just had open, this has seven police cars on it. Obviously, the game doesn't have seven police cars. It has police one, two, three, and four. Um, five, six, and seven are all they've been added on. However, the way Captain 14 does his mods, which is fantastic, and I love how people are going to this, is it's an open IV installer, which just basically means you come in here, you do your tools, your package installer, and it does everything for you. However, that can be a problem when you're troubleshooting, because then it's like, well, where does everything go? Well, I showed you where one of the other ones go. Update, update, common, data, and then DLC list. So I did not actually put this one in here. Captain 14's Open IV installer put it in there. But then you have to be careful that if it puts it in here for you, that it doesn't overwrite the current one that you have. Because you want to go in here and you want to right click this and you want to edit it. And then you're going to want to take. Let's just say this simple one right here. We'll copy this. We'll go down to the next line. And then we'll paste this one in. And then look at that. And then I can just say LSPD pack. That's all you gotta do with this. I hope this was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, uh, please let me know if there's anything that I can go into a little more specific for you guys. I'm uh, just trying to do this because I know you guys have a lot of questions when, when they come up. Um, but if you can get yourself familiar with how the mods work and how everything goes together, um, then it, it gets easier. Um, it's not easy at first, I can guarantee you that. I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I, I you know, I kind of have a understanding of what affects what. So, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, any comments, concerns, let me know. And if you like, please go ahead and hit the